Hey everybody, Fox with Foxo Games, and this is a Fox First Scent for Darkest Dungeon. Now, this game has actually been out there for quite a while, however, it's been in Early Access, and if you've seen my previous video on Early Access, really not a fan, really not a fan of paid betas, but that's another discussion for another time that I've actually already had. You can check out the video, there's a link in the video description. Now that it's released, I thought I'd give it a shot, I went ahead and picked it up. Unfortunately, it looks like it shot up $5, because I remember it being 20 but... Hopefully I didn't waste my money. I played this a little bit live on stream, so you'll notice that I've already got a game started here. Oh, sip of coffee. Okay, so Darkest Dungeon is pretty much what you would consider, if the term means anything, a hardcore game. In the sense that it is very difficult, it's very complex, um, the of this and there's a lot of narration in it too, so I'm going to be talking over the narrator. Excellent narration, um, interesting art style, uh, interesting animation style, you'll see all that. It's very easy on the computer and you'll notice it goes up to at least 144 frames per second, it uses about a gig of video memory. Very little CPU at just 6-5% right now, 30% GPU, so that's where we're at with that. I'm using multiple monitors, and if you go into the settings, the options here, not much here, full screen or windowed. This is windowed. It automatically defaults to borderless windowed, which is awesome. Resolution max is out at my max, so it probably goes higher than that. There's a blur effect that you can disable as well if you want to, and it, and it tells you kind of what everything does if you hover over it. Audio options, I turned a bunch of these down because it was very loud, very loud. And then some gameplay options are here as well. I also recommend turning off Enable Anonymous Data Collection. I just don't like sending out random stuff over the internet. Um, I'd rather not if I don't have to. All right, so we've got some characters set up here. Um, I haven't been doing too well, but what I'm going to do is see if I can embark on a journey here and just kind of show you what's going on. Uh, I'm going to throw these guys in there. Unfortunately, I do not at present have any sort of a healer that I can use. So, um, I'm not uh, I'm not going to be in the best situation here for doing this. But as long as I can pick like a an apprentice level 1 area, we'll go ahead and knock that one out. How about that? Let's build a party. The Beringer's an awesome uh, awesome fighter. We'll put the knight right in front here right click and you can kind of see what, what you got going on here seeker grave robber so there are a lot of different classes here you kind of uh, so far I'm getting auto generated like randomly selected characters with auto generated names that you can change if you'd like it tells you the preferred position for battle as well as the preferred targets for battle and that'll make more sense later we'll go ahead and throw her right there let's see if we can get a caster I think well he's kind of a caster but not full on magic, is he? Whatever, we'll just, we'll just do that. And actually, where where does he prefer to be? Uh, he prefers to be right there. She can be in either one, so I'm gonna swap them. So it's best to keep them in their preferred placement, and then also they can only hit specific enemies. It'll make more sense when we get in there. I'm gonna buy a bunch of food here. Uh, buy another shovel, a couple of these, some bandages. I'm just wasting money. I'm just buying a bunch of stuff. Just kind of see what we can do here. And some torches. And then that'll be good enough for now. By no means am I an expert on this game. I've played, uh, shoot, maybe about two hours of it. If that. And the general impression I'm coming back with is this is a very deep game that's going to appeal to a lot of people. But for those that don't want to dedicate a ton of time, this this may not be for you. Um, WASD will control your movement. You can move forward, you can move backward, and you'll notice the animation style. It's very simple. It almost looks kind of like a really nice full HD, um, high high frame rate flash game, if I if I can say that. Though that doesn't make it sound good. Flash game that never sounds like a good thing, does it? So wherever the torch is is where you are, and uh, we can move to these different rooms. This is a battle room. This room we don't know what we're gonna get. Uh, let's let's try that. Let's see what we get here. They're gonna pop up. There are traps that you can hit on the floor. Your characters slowly, uh, l basically lose their sanity by building up their stress meter, and as that happens, they can begin to act kind of strangely. For example, they may end up taking some of the treasure for themselves. They may become selfish. So when you encounter some treasure, they'll be like, "Oh, that's mine," and then you don't even get to use it in the game. It's like they took it for themselves. All sorts of different abilities. It's important to read these tool tips. At first, it was really confusing for me, but it basically shows you where your character needs to be in the lineup to use it and, and which enemies they can hit. So those are those uh, yellow and red circles down there. 
Sacrificial Stab. We've got Weakening Curse. Word Reconstruction, that's a bit of a heal. Vulnerability Hex. So what I might do here is hit that, t well, uh, let's see, let's see. Let's go ahead and do a sacrificial slab, sacrificial slab, stab to this dude right in the front. Bam. Knocked him out in one shot. So you can see kind of the art style, the approach, animations. It's quite simple and should work on a wide variety of machines. Right now, surprisingly, it's up to about a gig and a half of video memory, but I don't know any any graphics cards out there that have any less than two gigabytes nowadays most will probably have three to four if not more and then uh, if you have an intel hd graphics chipset on a laptop you could probably knock this out at like 1280 by 720 just turn down the blur effects and whatnot do it full screen and it shouldn't be too big a deal you should be able to run this on a fairly weak computer i've not used this class before pitho the grave robber let's do how about some poison darts? Let's see if we can poison this guy and watch his health drain. Blight, there we go. He got a debuff and he's got a damage over time on him. This girl has some really, really nice attacks. One thing I like is breakthrough, although I think this might move her forward. You can hit uh, several enemies at once, although it doesn't do a massive amount of damage to any single one. But if you've got a bunch that you're weakening, you could use her to knock them all out at once. See, four, three, and four and that moved her forward. And I think ideally we want the knight in the front. Let me see if I can uh, get the info on him. Well, he, he's good enough right there too. So he's good enough second in line, so that's no big deal. We can leave him there. Uh, he also has a buff to himself. Let's see, battle heal, inspiring cry, heal, stress heal, and plus torch. You also need torch light, otherwise you get more stress. Lots of really cool stuff here. Zealous accusation, let's do it. Let's see if we can knock someone out, boom. Nice. That guy's almost dead in the front, too. Interestingly enough, as if this this combat system is not complex enough already, when you kill some enemies, they drop a corpse, and then the corpse can actually block your melee characters from attacking enemies behind the corpse, so you have to destroy the corpses. And there's special abilities that can destroy them, get rid of them, or you can go ahead. I'm going to use a buff just so you guys can see how this works. That's a self only, so you, she can't cast on anyone else. Or um, you can attack the corpses to get rid of them. The good news is the corpses don't attack back. At least they haven't yet. Who knows? Maybe they'll come up with one. Because she just took a nice hard hit, I'm going to go ahead and put a heal on her. Nine. Lovely. And she resisted, I think, a nasty bleed effect that can come with that heal. Let's see. Last time we did the poison darts. Let's see if we can do a lunge. And Oh, oh he's only got one health left. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take him out so he can't hit us again. So you'll notice there's two corpses. That will block melee-only characters from hitting this third guy if, if their attack doesn't go three deep backwards. Oh, the knight. See, the knight got pushed back. So what we want to do is swap him. Unfortunately, it eats up a turn, but that's the way it goes. You can do that out of combat to just kind of get yourself set back up. Oh, it's her turn again, is it? Let's see if I can... Oh, I can. Awesome. Oh, um, that is it, guys. The first battle. Got 125 gold and a little treasure right there. Looks like an upside down missile. Snake oil. Minus 10% stress damage. That's, that's pretty good. Again, as your stress builds up, your characters can eventually just lose it and they might go crazy and who knows what they're going to do at that point. Uh, you got to take them back to town, you know, and depending on what type of character they are, maybe you'll take them to the tavern to, to drink. Maybe you'll take them to the uh, abbey or whatever it's called, like the church to pray or meditate. Oh, uh, look, look at this guy. Look what he's going to do. Ah, uh, see? He did that on his own. Uh, he didn't, uh... <laughs> Let's see if I can use that. There we go. He was trying to take that treasure for himself. Um, he acted very selfishly there. So you don't always have full control over your characters. You, you don't have just four characters, as you saw earlier. You get different characters as you play through the game. And uh, uh, from what I can tell, don't get too attached to any one particular character because uh, you'll be losing some and then they'll die and you have to leave them somewhere else or leave them, you know, leave them behind so that they can de-stress, relax, maybe meditate, whatever they need to do, drink at the tavern. So you got to replace them. So you're going to get used to uh, a whole bunch of different characters. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, it did stun. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Weakening curse. Uh, let's do that. There you go. Massive debuffs. Oh, and his stun broke off. Oh, and he buffed. Darn it. 
Dodge, nice. Yeah, this is um, this is a game based on a lot of RNG, which is random number get generator. That's what we say when we talk about things that get randomized. So what that means is that you never quite know exactly what's going to happen. Let's see. We're going to do this and see if we can knock this guy out in one shot. Probably not, but we'll see. Oh, we did it. Awesome. Overkill by one hit point. So RNG, which means it's randomized, means that Inspire and Cry, Heal, Stress, Heal, and Torch. Let's, yeah, we got to move him forward. That means that um, the way the battle works could change drastically depending on how the dice rolls, basically. So that is to say, if you just happen to get a really lucky critical hit at just the right time on a tough boss or something, or on a tough enemy, and you take him out real quick, that can drastically turn the tide of battle. Or let's say that they hit you for a massive critical. That could change things. Or let's say you're, the battle's not going well. Things are looking down for you. But just by pure luck, twice in a row, the last two standing enemies manage to miss you both times. You dodge them both times. Uh, that ends up being extremely helpful. And like I said, um, the ultimate tide of the battle can be decided by something as simple as a roll of the dice. Let's... Uh, Let's hit him with the breakthrough. That'll take that one out. Oh, it didn't. Shoot, I was misreading that health bar, darn it. See, the corpse is still there, which is going to block some people. He keeps getting knocked back, which is not... Or, or I keep uh, jumping in front of him, whichever is happening. i got to keep him in either the, the first spot or the second spot. Otherwise, he can't use his melee attacks. So, uh, it, it is in some ways a little tiny bit similar in the turn-based, uh, position-based combat to, like, uh, Legends of Grimrock. Of course, you don't move like that game. Uh, different perspective, of course. Let's see. Let's see if I can take him out. Excellent, excellent. That's one down. Although I think I should have taken out the cultist acolyte first because he's got some nasty spells, if I remember correctly. Vulnerability hex and weakening curse. Let's do. Let's see. Damage modifications. Yeah, it can be important to read these. Actually, uh, we'll keep healing for now. How about that? Oh, that sucks. You cannot use your heals out of battle, your spell heals from, for your characters. And if you think, oh, well, I'm going to kill all the enemies except for one, leave one weak enemy alive, and then just spam my heal ability, doesn't quite work out that way. Uh, it'll increase your stress, and then uh, there's a, always a chance that reinforcements will arrive. So if you extend the battle unnecessarily, trying to take advantage of the fact that, you know, you whittled them down to the last little weak enemy, and you're trying to, like, heal up real quick, well... There are negatives to that as well. You'll build stress on your party, and like I said, someone else could show up and uh, and uh, crash your party. They could get reinforcements that show up, which would not be good. Yeah, when I do that attack, it moves him or her forward. That's what I'm doing, and probably not do that. Let's see. I'm going to have her in front, so I'm going to keep her healed up. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. She's full again. Oh, he didn't like me healing my party, huh? All right, let's see if uh, Adrenaline Rush, we don't want that. See, I would love to do a Wicked Hack on him, but I can't reach him at the moment. That's not going to do a whole lot of damage. I might just break through these corpses real quick and, and knock them out. Ah, uh, see, I keep putting my Knight in the back here, and it doesn't really do a whole lot. Now, buffs, obviously, you should use early in the battle if you're going to use them. Otherwise, it can be a bit of a waste. Let's see, that's self plus 20 dodge. No, that is not what I want. Let's swap. There we go. Good, good, good. Uh, vulnerability Hex. Sacrificial Stab. See, he needs to move forward one if I'm going to, you know, do my best with that character. Debuff. I like it. I like it a lot. Two, that's not bad. Two is not bad. All right. Wicked Hack. And there we go. Critical. 14. Victory. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. So you'll notice, uh, we're going to take all here, you'll notice that you just return immediately to the screen, you, you conduct combat exactly where you left off. You move through the rooms just like this, backwards and forwards. Sometimes you can select one of two different rooms, and uh, I've noticed that in some cases, like, you can walk through a door, or you have to go down here to the map at the bottom down here and select one of the rooms. But with that, guys, I think you got an idea what Darkest Dungeon is about, and that's what a Fox First Scent video is. It's kind of like a first impressions, but it's a first scent. Let's see if we can knock these guys out real quick, and then I will leave you guys with that. How about it? One. Oh, I'd like more than one damage. Buffs and debuffs. Buffs and debuffs. Buffs and debuffs. What else can I say, guys? Bam! Throwing dagger. Did some good damage.
Oh, we're gonna knock this guy out fast. We might kill him right now. Oh, darn it. Six. Six ain't gonna do it, but this will. And of course, certain attacks are strong against undead or beasts or, you know, any other different types of enemies. Um, really interesting game. Very complex combat system, and it doesn't explain everything all that well, so you, you really have to dig into this. Uh, this is something where you can uh, you can take a really big bite of this game and still not really know what you're getting into. Um, I can imagine just spending hours and hours kind of perfecting the art of combat in this game. And of course, expect as you get deeper into the more difficult dungeons that it'll become even harder, more complex, and you'll find yourself battling all these debuffs and poisons and blights and traps and sanity and all sorts of different things. Your character's acting crazy, they could have a heart attack and die in the middle of the dungeon, which has happened to me. Um, really cool. Uh, if, you're, if your character gets knocked down to zero health, they don't immediately die. You do have a chance to bring them back or heal them, bring them back up. Uh, but it, of course, I believe that stacks some more of those uh, stress points on top of you. And with that, guys, that is Darkest Dungeon out of Fox First Scent. I hope to see you next time. I will be doing a review of the game in the next few days. I hope you're looking forward to it. I know I am, and I will see you all next time.